Welcome back, everybody. Okay, your voice, your choice. We're starting to see those hot-button issues that will become the debate points between candidates in the March primary. And you see them here on the stage, those who want to be elected to the California Senate debating border issues, homelessness, and even smash-and-grab robberies that are on the rise. All four candidates who are here on this stage would vote to certify the 2024 election if their opposing party nominee wins. The three Democrats agreed Donald Trump should not be on the ballot, but... This was interesting. The lone Republican, Steve Garvey, was hesitant to commit voting for Trump this year, too. I believe the greatest single currency we have as Americans is the right to vote. I think it's personal. I'll make that decision when the time comes. He shouldn't be on the ballot uh, at all um, because the Constitution is quite clear. If you take an oath to defend the Constitution, as he did, and then you violate that oath, by engaging in insurrection, you should be disqualified. Donald Trump engaged in an insurrection and, in my view, should not be on the ballot. But if that is what the courts decide and he won the election, I think that would be a grave, grave harm and disservice to our country. Donald Trump is not above the law. He is not immune from the crimes that he has committed. And so we have got to fight to make sure and vote to make sure that Donald Trump is not elected as president. All right, so what do you say? The latest Emerson College poll has Adam Schiff in the lead with 16%. Katie Porter trails with 13%. Steve Garvey at 10%. And Barbara Lee trailing at 9%. By the way, there's still a lot of room here for all of these candidates to get you on their side because 39%, 39% say they're undecided. And mostly those are people under the age of 60. So joining us now to break down the debate and how the candidates fared... David McEwen, political science professor at Sonoma State University. Welcome. Big question I have. 39%, according to that poll, say they are undecided. Why that many not on fire for any candidate? Well, the reason you see that is people are just starting to pay attention to an early primary. You've got pitchers and catchers reporting. You've got, right, Fat Tuesday. The Super Bowl just ended. Right. And so this debate isn't fundamentally changing the lay of the land. It's still Adam Schiff. The battle uh, here is clearly for second place. And take that 39% number, break it into thirds. A third of the folks are going to kind of move to the left, move to the right. It's uh, the number that are actually truly undecided is smaller. It's about 13, 14%. That's still a big number uh, and important, much more important for who's coming in second in California's top two system. But I think you're right. We might see them lean in just a little bit more as now things sort of focus more on what's happening here. So I do want to take a second, though, to talk about Steve Garvey. Just on the stage full of Democrats, he stands out, obviously, as the only Republican continuously associated with President Trump. Do you think this is in any way a tactic to help him to the general election? And even he was hesitant to admit, admit or even say who he was going to vote for, which some people might assume would be Donald Trump. Yeah, you have to make an assumption that Steve Garvey is going to vote for Donald Trump a third time. I don't think that's a big leap of faith. But getting Steve Garvey to say that is not going to happen. Steve Garvey just has to be kind of mediocre. He just has to be fine uh, to be second place. The reason for that is that Republicans kind of stay home to party. Democrats scatter all over. It's a deeply blue state. And there are other Republican candidates, like, for example, uh, Eric Early. But Steve Garvey is clearly in the driver's seat. So if he can be just, quote, unquote, fine, he can go into second place. And you didn't really see any fireworks last night that Katie Porter kind of would go after Steve Garvey or Katie Porter. And more than half the debate had elapsed before she went after Adam Schiff. She clearly needs to push to get into second place. And if you're Adam Schiff in this deeply blue state, you want Steve Garvey to face you uh, in the fall because essentially there will be a lot of Democrats voting up and down the ballot in November. And that would be good for Adam Schiff if it were a Schiff on Garvey race. So let's talk about Barbara Lee, homegrown here in the Bay Area, has a great reputation among so many people. And yet you see Katie Porter and Adam Schiff outperforming her. Does this speak to the power of having had a national platform on behalf of Schiff and Porter? And do you think that's the reason why Barbara Lee is really just not resonating? She's even behind the Republican candidate. Yeah, I mean, it's a good question. She, in the first debate, Barbara Lee, you know, with the audience, she, she really was on her game. She was really sharp uh, and, and soared in that debate, but she didn't move the polls very much. The second debate, this type of format uh, with all four of them up there, she really uh, took her a while to kind of warm up and get going on her questions, even questions that were in her wheelhouse, like, for example, a, a ceasefire in Gaza. 
And progressives have a segment of the vote. I call them moonlighting Democrats. They're not really Democrats. They're kind of progressives. But Barbara Lee has been battling for years and is a Bay Area icon, no doubt about it. But she hasn't been able to corral dollars to cut through and give a reason to stay on the debate stage. She could have helped Katie Porter quite a bit last night. She didn't do that. And and it looks like Barbara Lee is is going to kind of go into this race with a bit of a whimper. And, and that's really kind of an, an interesting development because she has been such an icon right. uh, on anti-war and really kind of pushing the envelope on progressive issues. And we didn't see any evidence of that last night. Well, David, we thank you so much for your insight and information. Of course, I'm sure we'll be, we will be talking to you more down the road as so much more of this is going to play out. We've got you on our dance card. Keep your <laughs> cell phone busy. It's going to be an interesting season. Thank you so much.